Like I promised in my guide video, here is a more relatable clear. I'm using Chi Chi Taser in the top half and Wanderer on the bottom half. The reason Chi Chi is viable is because she is a great taser driver and with how much damage the Abyss is doing, it's actually nice and comfy to have a healer of her caliber because she can keep you topped off really easily. And if you're running the clam set on her, that healing translates to extra damage. But I will say the main star of the first half is still Kazuha because of his grouping potential. He can save so much time just by keeping the enemies together. For the second half, Wanderer is quite comfy to play because he relies mostly on his skill, which means there's no energy issues that you have to keep that you have to keep maintained. It's pretty much a standard Wanderer lineup, Wanderer, Farazan, and Bennett. The flex option I've opted with is Zhongli, obviously because the final chamber has this boss that has a Geo Shield, where Zhongli can efficiently break it with his abilities. Now floor 12-1 first half has two waves of enemies. Generally the plan is just keep the enemies grouped together and deal with them all at once. When the first wave of enemies is about to die, run slightly behind them because then you'll be in position for when the new wave spawns. There is nothing crazy about this first half. I will admit that it may be a bit harder without Kazuha because it won't be as easy to keep the enemies grouped together. For the second half, it's just the Jade Plume. The only thing to watch out for are its hard hitting attacks. If you're not careful and you don't have protection, it's pretty easy to die to it. However, most of its attacks are quite telegraphed and if you're running Zhongli, you can just face tank everything like I do. There's no special mechanic with this boss. Um, like I mentioned in the other video, if you have an electro unit, you can knock it prone, but it's not necessary. It's basically a walking pinata that kind of fights back at you, but nothing, nothing too hard. Chamber 2 first half has three waves of enemies. The first wave is a bunch of specters that can easily be grouped. So if you have Kazuha, keep them all together and then just deal with them all at once. Before they die, there's a brief delay and then they'll explode. When the last one is beginning to explode, start running a little bit towards the back because that's where the next wave of three Whopper Flyers will spawn. When they spawn, they will knock you up unless you're in an iframe. But generally, they're also pretty easy to deal with. Once you've dealt with them, four of these night enemies will spawn across the room. I think it's easier if you run slightly behind them. In my experience, that keeps them grouped together. But I also have Kazuha, so Kazuha might be the one doing most of the work anyways. So in this run, I had the benefit of keeping them frozen for a long time, which prevented them from doing anything, which kind of made the fight very trivial. On the second half, it's the Perpetual Mechanical Array. The only gimmick with this boss is once it drops to around 30% HP, it will become invulnerable and then spawn an add. You must kill this add before you can start damaging the PMA again. When it shoots its laser, it's easiest to just run behind it. 
The laser move is actually nice because it keeps the mechanical array in place and it won't jump up. Once you've defeated the ad, the boss will lay prone for you to attack it. If you can't burst it down within this window, it will become invulnerable again and then restart its pattern from the beginning. Now chamber 3 first half is Coppelia. This boss is pretty straightforward. She stays in the middle. So you can just constantly whack at her. The only thing to note is this boss hits really hard and can trigger reactions on you. So if you're standing in Bennett burst, you may take much more damage than anticipated. Or if you're running Xing Chill like me and you're not careful, you may get frozen. And then while you're frozen and not able to move, y you may die. Otherwise, just bring a really good shielder, some interruption resist, or a really good healer, or all of the above. For me, I have Xing Chou that provides interruption resist and damage reduction, and Chi Chi who provides a lot of healing. And so, I never really encountered problems on this stage. This floor is also kind of a punching bag. Now on the second half, it's the mech. So like I said, Zhongli's pillar and burst can almost bring the shield down. And then you can just do plunging attacks to deal with the rest of it. And then just rinse and repeat. Break the shield, do your damage, break the shield again, continue doing damage, break the shield again, continue doing damage until you have defeated the boss. This one also does not move, and so is also by definition a punching bag. So that's Abyss 12. It's a bunch of punching bags or suckable enemies. It's not too bad to deal with. I'm going to show you my character builds and you can see that this time I don't have crazy high investment in my characters. I use two five stars on each team. All of my five stars are C0 except for Chi Chi, which is C1, but I don't think uh, Chi Chi C1 is any game breaking constellation. So good luck with the Abyss. Take your time with the Abyss. Don't feel the need to have to clear it if you are struggling with it. But it is a nice way to to enjoy the fruits of your labor if you're someone like me who builds characters to see them shine. I created another universe and